I went on a trip to Vancouver and I thought it was a great opportunity to test out the camera and battery life of the Galaxy S22 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro. So let's take a look at how these two phones performed in a real day in my life while traveling. And to make the battery life test fair, I actually got another SIM card. So both of these phones are using data throughout the entire day. Now I know the S22 Ultra's direct competitor should have been the iPhone 13 Pro Max, but I don't have one of those. And the two 13 Pros actually have the same set of cameras this year anyway. And when it comes to the battery life, today's result might surprise you. So I did change the screen resolution to 2K on the Samsung and for the rest of the phone specs and settings, you can find them down below in the description. Okay, so I started the day with 96% on the Samsung and 97% on the iPhone. For breakfast, I got this delicious looking bubble waffle. So I took some photos with both. I used the 108 megapixel mode on the Samsung and its photo looks a lot more saturated than the iPhones. And I do prefer how the Samsung's main camera looks here. I think it made the bubble waffle look more appetizing, but it still looks realistic. But the Samsung's video doesn't look as good as its photo. It loses that nice saturation and ends up looking pretty similar to the iPhone's video, which doesn't mean it looks bad. I think both still look pretty nice here. Okay, so after breakfast, I headed towards a bike rental place near Stanley Park. So I went outside to wait for my Uber, which turned out to be a bad idea, by the way. You'll see why in a second. But for now, it was looking super nice out. So the photos from both phones looked great. But the Samsung did make the sky look more saturated and blue compared to the iPhone. I think this guy really was very blue that day. So I do like how the Samsung captured that a bit better than the iPhone. However, this nice saturation just goes away when you switch over to the video. So it ends up looking pretty similar to the iPhones in terms of the color. And I do appreciate how the iPhone keeps the look consistent when switching from photo to video. But that's honestly not the biggest problem for Samsung's video. If we look at the tree branches here, you can see there's this kind of weird looking texture. And this is because there's some pretty pronounced artifacts on all the contrasting edges. So around the tree leaves and branches, you can clearly see this white outlining. And this is most likely due to the large amount of sharpening that Samsung applied to this video. The iPhone video certainly looks a lot cleaner in this shot. And now for the front camera. So the Samsung is a bit more saturated, which you can really see in my skin and mask. But I think the bigger difference here is the shallower depth of field. So on the Samsung, you can see the background is just a bit more out of focus and softer looking. And I do really like how this makes the subject stand out and the background just looks less distracting. And this is because the S22 Ultra has a larger sensor for the front camera. So unlike in cinematic mode or portrait mode, here the background is just naturally out of focus. Okay, so I called the Uber on my iPhone and I opened up Google Maps on the S22 Ultra. So they're both using GPS. The ride started out great. I started listening to a podcast and also took some photos and videos with both phones through the car window. And then I started noticing that I wasn't moving like at all. The traffic was horrific and it might have literally taken me hours to get to my destination. But luckily there was a SkyTrain station nearby, so I took that instead. All right, so now it's an hour and a half later and both phones have dropped about 15% in battery to 81%. And I'm really surprised that the iPhone with a smaller 3,095 milliamp hour battery is so far able to keep up with the much larger 5,000 milliamp hour battery in the S22 Ultra. So the lighting was pretty bad on the SkyTrain, but I took this selfie video. And even in this horrible lighting, the iPhone produced a very accurate looking skin tone, whereas the Samsung gave the entire image a magenta tint, which definitely doesn't look good. And 30 minutes later, I made it to downtown Vancouver. It was such a nice day, so I decided to walk to the bike rental place and I pulled up Google Maps for the directions. I'm actually running like an hour behind schedule. I originally booked it for 1 p.m. starting, but right now it's already two, um, so hopefully that's fine. But the weather in Vancouver today is so beautiful, clear skies, the clouds look so pretty today, so I'm very happy and excited. I also took some videos as I was walking, and I think the iPhone video looks a lot better because the Samsung video still has this pretty pronounced artifact, especially around the tree branches, and this is most likely due to sharpening. And it just looks really busy and not very real. Realistic. 
but both of these phones have really good stabilization. Both the videos look pretty smooth, even though I was walking while just holding the phones in my hands. Now for comparison, this is what walking while holding my Lumix S5 camera looks like. This footage is just so shaky. So yeah, phone stabilization is pretty insane. And then I rented out a bike. I was super excited. So this is my current biking setup. I have a basket and I just have so much stuff in here. My camera isn't in the best position, but hopefully it survives. And this is the bike. And this is the path I'll be biking along. It is so beautiful today. I am just so happy right now. All right, so I wanted to do an extreme stabilization test. So I recorded a video with the phones in my bike basket. And I mean, the stabilization still has its limits. Whenever I hit a bump, the image just warps completely. It looks kind of funny, but when I just held the phone in my hands, the video actually looked very smooth. Anyway, so the bike ride was super beautiful. I stopped at this viewpoint with a lighthouse to enjoy the view of the mountains and the ocean. And of course, I took some pictures too. So I think both videos look great here. They have pretty insane dynamic range. None of the clouds are clipped. The sky looks great. The mountains look great. And look at the little seaplane go. Now for these photos, I definitely prefer the Samsung ones because the water looks more blue in them. To be honest, I don't really like how the iPhone made the water look gray. It definitely didn't look like that in real life. I can add some saturation to the iPhone photo so the grass color roughly matches, but the water just never looks quite as nice as the Samsung's. However, the three times telephoto on the iPhone is a lot more detailed, especially when we punch into this blue boat right here. But of course, on the Samsung, you have the option of 10 times zoom, which we'll see later. And in case you were wondering how I was filming everything, this is my very sketchy setup. And after some biking, I arrived at another beautiful viewpoint at the Lionsgate Bridge. So the Samsung's 108 megapixel mode is a bit sharper, but it's not really an obvious difference unless you punch in. Now for the video, the colors are pretty similar here, but I still think the Samsung video is a bit over sharpened. The water texture looks kind of weird. So right now I'm at the Lionsgate Bridge, just stopping here to take a little break. This bike ride is actually just so beautiful and nice and the weather is amazing today. Guys, I don't know what happened to the Samsung selfie here. I don't know why it looks so dark and the clouds almost have like a yellow tint. It almost looks like a filter got slapped on. All right, anyway, so then I arrived at a beach. It has now been three and a half hours since we started the day and the battery percentage is now 66% on the Samsung and 57% on the iPhone. The views at this beach were stunning but I think it looks much better through the Samsung's lens than the iPhone's. I really like the color of the sky, water, and sand in the Samsung's photos. I've generally been preferring the Samsung's because the colors are more saturated and it just gives a more cheerful vibe. Now it was time to head back towards the bike rental place, but along the way, I did test out the telephoto lens a bit more. The S22 Ultra does have 10 times optical zoom, so its photo here obviously looks much better than the iPhone's, which only has three times optical zoom. The amount of detail that the Samsung was able to capture at that distance is pretty insane. It actually has a full frame equivalent focal length of 230 millimeters. For the Samsung's 100 times zoom, it's cool that it can zoom that far, but I mean, the photo is not really usable. I can barely tell what this thing even is. So this is definitely more of a gimmick. At this point, it was 4.30. So four and a half hours since the day started, the iPhone has dropped to 48%, whereas the Samsung still has 61%. So I guess when using the cameras, the iPhone's more efficient SOC isn't really helping out that much. So the Samsung pulls ahead pretty significantly here in terms of the battery life. So I stopped for a late lunch and all of these different colors are actually different flavors of soup dumplings. I was starving at this point, but camera still has to eat first. To be honest, I was disappointed by both of these photos. The iPhone photos just look bland and hazy with very little contrast, while the Samsung photos have the exact opposite problem. There's too much contrast and saturation. And especially for this blue one, the Samsung just made it look so dark. And the videos are largely the same result as the photos. 
So I had just a few hours left before I had to leave Vancouver. So I decided to go to a beach near the airport and I used Google Maps to navigate. It was about six now. The iPhone has 39% and the Samsung has 51%. There wasn't much to do on the SkyTrain, so I kind of just scrolled on Instagram for a bit. This beach was super beautiful. The sun was just beginning to set, though it was super windy. So I took some ultra-wide photos and videos with both phones, and the ultra-wide videos look pretty similar, and so do the photos for the most part, except for this one, where the iPhone just missed exposure and made it look kind of rainy and sad. I could see planes taking off from here, and the Samsung's 10x zoom came in handy. You can even tell this was an Air Canada plane. It's so windy, so cold but the view is worth it. This is so beautiful. The sun is kind of setting, not really, but it just looks so beautiful in the sky. Let's zoom in and see. Let's zoom in more and see. Wow, and also the way it reflects off the ocean. I love it. The sunset photos were beautiful. The colors are different, but I think both phones did great. So it's now been an hour and 45 minutes since we last checked on the battery and my iPhone had dropped nearly 20% in battery. So now it only had a pretty alarming 20% left. The Samsung dropped a pretty significant 15% as well and had 34% left. This was honestly pretty surprising. I think this might be because the signal at the beach was poor and so the phones had to work extra hard to get signal, which consumed more battery. I know I was supposed to test the battery life and stuff like that, but I need this phone for Uber and without Uber, I can't get anywhere. So that's why I need to plug it in. Thankfully, my Uber arrived and it was now time to say goodbye to Vancouver. So I arrived at the airport, checked in, did all that stuff, and finally made it onto the plane. It was a Boeing 787 Dreamliner, and it had these lights, which looked pretty cool. I also took some night mode photos of them. The videos did struggle a lot in the low light, but they are pretty small sensors after all. Anyway, so I'm gonna end the day here. I'm just going to watch a movie and also try to fall asleep. So today was a pretty heavy day for both of the phones and the iPhone kept up surprisingly well before I started taking lots of photos and videos and also using GPS. So if you take lots of photos and videos, the iPhone 13 Pro might not even last all day, but the S22 Ultra handled it with no problem. And when it comes to the photo, the Samsung's main lens definitely is a lot better looking with more saturation and nicer colors. However, when it comes to video, on the Samsung, the sharpening artifacts really killed it for me. I found those to be pretty distracting. So when recording everyday clips, maybe for something like vlogs, I would definitely use the iPhone. But if I'm mainly taking photos, I would prefer the S22 Ultra. If you want to know more about these two phones, you can check out the dedicated reviews that I made right over here. I also recently launched channel memberships and you can learn more about that by clicking on the join button down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel down below so you'll get more videos like this. The rest of my social medias are here so you can follow me on those other platforms if you would like to. And yeah, that's all that I have to say for this video. I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye.